It's Thursday, June 12th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. South Sudan's government and rebels have agreed to form a unity government within 60 days to put an end to a six-month civil war. The country's East African neighbors have threatened sanctions against President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Riek Machar if they don't keep their promises this time. Both sides violated the two previous ceasefires. Mediators have accused the men of seeking military victory over peace. The fighting has killed thousands and propelled the world's youngest nation into a humanitarian crisis. More than 100 Rwandan rebels have surrendered their weapons in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The men are members of the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, which contains remnants of the militia that carried out the country's 1994 genocide. The rebels now want to return to negotiate with their government. Congolese officials are asking them to apply for political asylum or go home, where some of their leaders are wanted criminals. The rebels are scattered across the eastern Congo and have been blamed for widespread violence and human rights abuses. They promised to disarm in late 2013, but the Rwandan government refused to talk to them. The two countries have accused each other of using the rebels for their own interests. Soldiers in Nigeria's northeast are shutting down sports bars to protect World Cup fans from the threat of attack. The armed Islamist group Boko Haram has terrorized thousands of people in this part of the country over the last five years. The military is concerned the venues are easy targets because the group has vowed to fight all signs of Western influence. The warnings aren't limited to Nigeria. Authorities are asking soccer fans to be a little more careful in Kenya and in Uganda, where twin bombings killed 74 people watching the World Cup final match in 2010. Environmentalists in Chile are celebrating a victory after the government rejected a multi-billion dollar dam project aimed at meeting growing energy demands. The plan, known as Hydro Aysen, would have built more than a thousand miles of power lines in the Patagonia region. Activists have demonstrated against the project because it would have forced dozens of families to relocate and posed potential dangers to the wildlife in the area. The company in charge of the project had promised jobs, development projects, and cheaper energy. It hasn't announced whether it plans to appeal the decision. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. The trafficante mata e mostra o corpo. O policial mata e some. Então eu acho que o Estado botou extermínio nas comunidades porque a ditadura acabou. Por rico, por pobre continua.